Hey RebelEM followers, this paper just came across my desk and it's the first randomized clinical trial that I'm aware of that compares delayed sequence intubation with rapid sequence intubation. Now this is a screenshot of the title of the paper, Peri-intubation hypoxia after delayed versus rapid sequence intubation in critically injured patients on arrival to trauma triage, a randomized control trial. Now I have the PubMed PMID number at the bottom of the screen so you can go into PubMed and search and pull this paper yourself, but this was a randomized clinical trial of 200 agitated trauma patients needing definitive airway or in other words needed to be intubated. The clinical question these authors were trying to answer was does DSI decrease peri-intubation hypoxemia in agitated trauma patients requiring definitive airway control compared to RSI? So this is exactly what they did. So for delayed sequence intubation, what they did is they gave IV ketamine up to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram, but they gave this in 0.5 milligram per kilogram increments until the patient was kind of calm, but still spontaneously breathing. They then began pre-oxygenation for three minutes. And after that three minutes, they gave IV succinyl choline at 1.5 milligrams per kilogram and proceeded with intubation. Now for rapid sequence intubation, they did things in a slightly different order. They tried doing pre-oxygenation for three minutes. They then gave IV ketamine at 1.5 milligrams per kilogram, followed in quick succession with IV succinyl choline at 1.5 milligrams per kilogram, and then proceeded to intubation. Now some things that were common in both groups, pre-oxygenation in this study was done with a face mask at 10 liters per minute. All intubations were performed by second year anesthesiology residents, and interestingly, the choice of laryngoscope blade was direct laryngoscopy as opposed to video laryngoscopy. A little bit about the patients. The most common reason for intubation was altered mental status, and if you look, the median GCS in both groups was six. So these were pretty altered and agitated patients. The most common cause of trauma in this study was blunt trauma from motor, motor vehicle accidents, 82% uh, of the population. So their primary outcome was peri-intubation hypoxemia, and the way they defined this was an SpO2 of less than 93% from pre-oxygenation until one minute after intubation. And if you look at that primary outcome, delayed sequence intubation had significantly less peri-intubation hypoxemia compared to rapid sequence intubation. 8% versus 35%. A secondary outcome they had was first attempt success. And the way they defined this was insertion of a laryngoscope beyond the teeth, whether you got the, the tube into the trachea or not. And that secondary outcome also showed delayed sequence intubation to be better than rapid sequence intubation, 83% versus 69%. So a couple commentaries on this study. So I can tell you that across the board, delayed sequence intubation in this niche of agitated patients needing pre-oxygenation did better no matter what time point you looked at minus baseline. So they like were checking every one minute, they were checking SpO2 and in every single time point, DSI did better than RSI. The only difference was at baseline where the oxygen saturation was 92% in the rapid sequence intubation group and 91% in the delayed sequence intubation group, which I think we can all agree is pretty much equal. So they started equal at baseline, but DSI did way better. Secondary uh, outcome. So DSI, 17 patients out of 100 were not intubated on first attempt success, and eight of those were due to desaturation. So that's 47% of those patients that they couldn't intubate. Uh, was because they were getting hypoxic. In rapid sequence intubation, this was 35 patients out of 100 that couldn't be intubated on first attempt, and 31 of those were due to desaturation. This is 89%. So now some people may say, should we be doing DSI versus RSI in more patients? And I think that this is a hypothesis generating outcome. First of all, these were second year anesthesiology residents and I'm not saying anything against those residents, but operator experience does play a role. 
They use direct laryngoscopy, which we know in trainees, video laryngoscopy is the superior blade to use when we're doing intubations. And then there was no comment on whether they used bougie at all um, as a first attempt uh, for intubation. And I think there's too many confounding variables to draw a hard conclusion on this. And because it's a secondary outcome, the study's not powered for that but certainly something we should explore and something we should think about a little bit more. So the bottom line in this first randomized clinical trial of DSI versus RSI, in agitated patients not tolerating preoxygenation who need definitive airway control, DSI reduces incidence of peri-intubation hypoxemia compared to RSI and should be our go-to strategy. Before this, we had one observational trial and then a lot of experts telling us this is what we should be doing. But we, now we finally have that randomized clinical trial that kind of puts the nail in the coffin in this. Let me know your thoughts, comments, and questions. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.